Welcome to another episode of So What Is Your Point? I'm Roger Matthews, and I'm here with my co-host, Stephen Moulton. And today we're talking about what to say when you don't know what to say. There are a lot of times which we are challenged and someone asks us a question and it kind of catches us off guard. And one of the biggest challenges is, what do we say? How do we respond when you don't know what to say? Your ideas, Steve. Well, think about it this way. <clears throat> Have you ever been confronted with someone who disagrees with a position you've taken or a statement that you've made, or you don't agree with what they've said? We live in a very contentious time. But if you want to get a result that's positive, a positive outcome, if you will, you really need to have some emotional intelligence and empathy as you use some of these questions to find out where the other person's really coming from. When someone feels like they're being heard, they're much more open to hearing what you have to say. Yeah, and it takes all the pressure off of you when you respond with some, some question that throws it back to them. Right. So let's, let's take a look at the next slide, if you will, which is talking about empathy. And it's really important to have empathy as you ask these questions. I mean, really be, want to understand, have a sincere desire to understand where that other person is coming from. If they, if they sense that you are sincere, then you can ask a question. Next, <clears throat> next qu the question there after in empathy, there we go, next. To say, that's interesting tell me more. Yeah, and that really shows that you're listening <clears throat> as well as uh, you're responding because you're sincerely interested in what they're having to say. And it gives you a little more information so that you can respond in a way that is uh, more effective. Actually, I think you need not just to gather information for responding more effectively, but being able to go further in your questioning. So if they ask a question of you, you can say, I'm curious, why would you ask that? Again, that's, it is gathering more information, but it's getting their perspective. They're talking rather than you're talking. Right, right. And it shows you're sincerely interested. Right, so go on to the next one. I'm curious, what do you mean by that? Right. Again, by what do you mean by, I'm curious, what do you mean by that? You're showing sincere interest in understanding where they're coming from. And if you wanted to do a stroke for them, you could always say, you know, you couldn't have asked a better question at this point and then start to answer and then stop. And then, you know, just to clarify, what do you mean by that? Right. It builds the rapport, it builds the trust and it opens them up to hearing another perspective. Rather than confronting in opposition to what they're saying. So when you, when you have two forces pounding against each other, you get resistance. It's, it sets up a wall, doesn't it? Right, where if you're, if you, if you're opening to your, yourself to them, they're more likely to open themselves to you. So right. let's go to another right. question. Okay. 
fascinating. How did you come to that conclusion? All too often, people are, are in a state today where all they're really doing is parroting something that someone else said. Now you're, now you're asking them to really think seriously about how they came to that conclusion. Because someone told you? Oh, you mean your teacher told you that? Hmm. Did you do any more research on that? Have you checked their facts? It also lets the other party redefine their question so that they can express it in a different way because maybe they weren't clear in their communication. So it's a great time to say, you know, how did you come to that conclusion really uh, allows them to elaborate on what they're thinking about and what their perspective is. Correct. Okay, out of curiosity, where did you get your information? It's kind of a similar question. There's a follow on to what they just got through describing. Right. Again, it's one of those, it's one of those things that just opens the door a little bit wider, a little bit wider as we're going through the conversation. Right. It goes a little deeper into the discussion. Correct. So if people want to really implement the strategy, uh, here are three ways in which they can do that. Listen more carefully, then summarize what they think they heard, and then respond. How is that so important, Stephen, in helping people really implement the strategy? Once you've had given them an opportunity to express themselves, again, they're more likely to be open to what your thoughts are. You, by, summarize, by having listened and summarizing what they're saying, and they're agreeing that what you're summarizing is accurate, or if they challenge, they said, no, that's not really what I said. Well, help me, help me understand really what, what you said because I thought that's what you said. Again, opening the door a little bit more. And then you can say, have you given this perspective a thought? And you can respond with something that makes them think rather than challenging straight away their position. Right, excellent. Okay, we hope that you enjoyed this episode of So What Is Your Point? Uh, please come to our website, so what is your point.com, and listen to more of our podcasts. We have over 30 podcasts now, and uh, we're all speaking about getting your point across and communicating more effectively. We'll see you next time.